Yes, ma'am, we start. Kar dene. I'm Dr. Teba Iqbal, assistant professor at Daw University of Health Sciences. Today, I will discuss a superficial fungal infection. Fungal infections are broadly divided into superficial fungal infections, subcutaneous, and systemic fungal infection. At your level, superficial fungal infection, uh, we will only discuss superficial fungal infection. And what are superficial fungal infection or superficial mycosis? They are usually confined to the outermost layer of the skin here, mucosa, and they do not invade the deeper tissues. Okay, fungi are broadly divided into two basic forms, mold and the yeast. Mold are usually dermatophytic infection, while yeast are the candidial infection. Molds are made up of long nucleated filament called hyphae. The aggregation of hyphae is known as mycelium and the whole mass of fungus is known as tellus. Mold usually grow on solid media as a circular colonies and in liquid media as a ball-like colonies. The example of molds are aspergillus, dermatophytic infections, including trichophytum and microsporum. While yeast are the unicellular made up of white or globose cell, they reproduce by budding or fission. They produce soft or mucoid colonies. The example of yeast are the candida and the mathesia. These are the yeast. See? They reproduce by budding, candida albicans, the most common example. And these are the molds, okay? Flamentous molds. These are the hyphae, and the whole is known as mycelium, okay? These are the yeast. They produce smooth colonies, while the uh, uh, hyphae, they, these are the molds, which produce fussy molds colonies. Okay, if you have any problem in between the lecture, you can um, note your queries and you can write it down and I will answer in between the lecture or after the uh, lecture, whichever, whichever is feasible. Okay, we can identify fungal infection clinically on the basis of history, examination, and uh, by wood light examination and the laboratory method, which include direct microscopy, culture, and the molecular diagnosis like PCR. What is wood slide examination? It is a, a lamp with, which have a blue light which can, can consists of 9% nickel oxide and barium silicate. Its wavelength is 365 nanometer. And certain uh, fungal, fungi organism, they, they fluorescent. They, uh, they produce different color under fluorescent light. Okay. Now, superficial mycosis include Petrasis versicolor, Tinea corporis, Tinea capitis, Tinea barbie, Tinea fasciae, Tinea pedis, Tinea manum, Tinea curis, Tinea ungum, and candidiosis. These are all dermatophytic infection according to the site. For example, if the teen, uh, fungal infection occur over the face, then it is known as Tinea fasciae. And over the scalp, this is tinea corp, uh, capitis. Corporis is fungal infection of the glabrous skin. We will discuss these in future slides. Okay, this is Petrasis versicolor. Petrasis versicolor is a superficial fungal infection caused by Malsicia furfur. Okay, the most common organism is Malsicia furfur, and it is a mild chronic infection, usually aggravated in the summer. Uh, summer seasons. Okay, the the presenting complaint are they usually present as a macule? Sorry, they pre uh, present it at a macule or patches with fine scale. It is usually asymptomatic. Uh, the color is usually mild erythematous, but it may be hyperpigmented or hyperpigmented. Okay, they are confluent, sharply demarcated macules or patches. Sometimes erythematous, sometimes they have different color, like sometimes hyperpigmented, hyperpigmented. That, that's why it's known as worsi color, variation in the color. Okay, they are associated with fine scale. Okay, in darker skin, in darker, um, uh, in untanned skin, they produce, uh, they are presented with darker macule, but in tanned skin, they can present with the paler macule. Okay, the most common site of petrasis worsi color is upper trunk, upper arm, neck, abdomen, groin, axilla, face, and scalp. It can occur in the uh, teenagers group and but can be seen in the uh, infants, uh, kids, infants and to toddlers and the adults. Okay, a wide woodland examination produce pale yellow frozen. This is the view of the wood light examination. Okay, normally it's present as like this. Okay, now under woodland examination, pale yellow, these macules uh, fluorescent 
give pale yellow color. Okay. In Caucasian, it's produced as air tomatoes, while in African, they are produced as hyperpigmented macules. Okay. Laboratory uh, diagnosis, when we do the microscopy, uh, they produce a spaghetti, a spaghetti and meatball appearance or banana or grape-like appearance. Okay, these are the high fees. Okay, these are the appearance of uh, fungi under microscopy. Okay. Now, treatment include, uh, we can do for uh, topical. If they are not responding to topical, then we get to systemic therapy. Okay, in topical, ketoconazole shampoo, uh, selenium sulfide, these are, uh, they are the first line therapy, while we can also give terbinafine cream, or in, if they are resistant to topical treatment, then we have to give itraconazole, of, uh, usually 100 mg OD for five to 10 days. Okay, the total dose should be 800, 2000 mg over five days. Okay, now to dermatoph dermatophytic infection, dermatophytes, which are which are caused by dermatophytes. Okay, they are superficial. They only present in the superficial skin, keratinophilic, keratin loving. Okay, they are further divided into microsporum species, trichophytum, and epidermophytum. Okay, now tinea corporis, the most common infection is tinea corporis. It is a ringworm of the glabrous skin. Anybody knows what is glabrous skin? Glabrous skin is usually hairless skin. Okay, uh, palm and soles is also hairless, and the other body part which has a fine skin. It is also known as glabrous skin. Okay. Okay, the most common species of tinea corpore is tinea rubrum and microsporum okay. okay, but it can be present. It can be present over the neck, upper trunk, lower trunk, and buttocks. Okay, this is presentation of tinea corporis. It can be solitary, it can be multiple. Sometimes they coalesce to form a bigger plot. They, they are usually annular lesion. What are annular lesion? Annular lesion are those lesions which are prominent uh, outer marking while inner uh, there is clearance in the clear in the centers. This is characteristic of annular lesion. They are sharply demarginated. Okay, the margins are well demarcated. They have uh, raised margin. They can be single, multiple. Sometimes they confluent. Um, the margins are more inflamed as compared to the central. Sometimes the margins are uh, they have vesicles and pustules over the margins. Okay, sometimes there is scaling and sometimes there is central resolution. Central resolution is a characteristic feature of tinea corporis. Okay, central resolution occur because uh, there's elimination of fungus from the center and it is spread like this. Okay, and the central part is area is the area which is resistant to the reinfection. Okay, the treatment of tinea corporis, if it is localized, then we have to give topical terbinafine for two to three weeks or topical azulk. As all creams. If they are multiple lesions and they are not responding to the topical treatment, then we have to give oral terbinafine, which is the drug of choice. Okay, the dose of terbinafine is 250 mg once for two to three weeks. Okay, for adults, it's 250 mg once daily for two to three weeks. Okay, and the uh, second line treatment is itraconazole or grisophilbin. Now, tinea capitis. It is the ringworm of the of the scat. Uh, the causative organism is Crisporum species and the Trichophytum species. Okay, uh, tinea capitis is most commonly seen in children, while in adults it is rare. If it causes in the uh, if the uh, fungal infection on the other tinea capitis, then it is caused by tinea tonsillans. Okay, tinea capitis can be divided into further four division: ectotrix. Endotrix, favors, and echidion. These are the type of tinea capitis. Actrotrix is caused by macrosporum species, while endotrix is caused by trichophytum species. Favors is caused by trichophytum chenilinae, and echidion is also caused by trichophytum varicosum. Now, what is actrotrix? Actrotrix means um, fungal infection involved the outside of the shaft. 
okay this is caused by the microsporum species mainly okay and the endotrichs the fungi involved invade the hair shaft okay this is favors favors is caused by trachospodium species in which the favors uh, the there is spaces in the hair shaft okay this is ectotrix okay uh, ectotrix present as um, patches of partial hair uh, partial alopecia they are usually circular broken off hair still gray hair due to coating they may be finely scaling they are also sharply uh, demarcated and uh, there is minimal in inflammation caused by ectotrix. Okay, woodland give green fluorescence. Okay, and large spores. Okay, this is caused by trichophytum species. This is gray patch, endotrix. This is ectotrix refers to a scaling with a lack of inflammation. There is a broken of ears with gray and may be fine scales. Okay, this is endotrix, which is caused by uh, trichophytum tonsillans and volatium. It's entirely within the hair shaft. Okay, the hair becomes fragile and is broken off. It is also non inflammatory. It present as a, a patchy badness or a black dot like this. This is black dot. Okay. Okay. So, one presentation is gray patch, which is caused by ectotrix. And one presentation is black dot, which is caused by endotrix. Okay, clear? These are two presentation, black dot and the gray patch. Okay. Now, other one is kirion. Kirion mostly present as a, a single inflammatory swelling. The last two, both last two were the uh, gray patch and the black dot were non-inflammatory, while kirion is inflammatory. It's painful inflammatory bars uh, with presenting complaint of discharging pus or sinuses. They may be mating of the hairs due to pus. Okay, maybe one lesion or the two lesion can occur, and this is um, they this become secondary infected and may be associated with lymphadenopathy. Okay, now favors it is another pattern. It present as a yellowish cup shaped crust, confluent. They become they they may become confluent, large cup shaped crust, and uh, it result in sacatricial alopecia. Sacatricial alopecia is a it, scarring alopecia. Okay. This is favors present as a yellowish crust. So we have discussed four pattern of the tinea capitis. This is favors, which present as a yellowish crust. And this is kirion, inflammatory mass. This is black dot and gray patch. These are the four pattern of tinea capitis, okay? Now the treatment uh, is, it can spread if they have uh, you ha they have pets at their homes, so infection control of domestic pets. And the first time uh, treatment is terbinafine orally. Okay, we cannot give a uh, topical in case of when hair or nail is involved, whether it is localized or generalized. We have to give oral treatment in case of tinea capitis. Okay, so first line treatment for dermatophytic infection of the scalp is terbinafine. 250 mg once daily for four to six weeks. Then the second line is itraconazole or grasofilvin. Itraconazole also included in the second line. Okay, the first line is only terbinafine. Okay, now tinea barbie. Tinea barbie is a ringworm infection of the beard area. Okay, and the most common species is caused by trichophytum. You have to remember trichophytum species or matrisporum species. If you remember the full name, then it's very good. Okay, it present as a papular folliculitis. The most common area is beard, obviously. Here can be easily removed from this inflammatory area. So normally, the, the characteristic lesions of tinea, tinea, all over the tinea, are the angular lesions. But in the beard area, it can present as a folliculitis. Okay, so the differentials are the boil, like folliculitis, bacterial folliculitis. The differential can be acne. It can look like acne, okay, rosacea or pseudofolliculitis. Okay, what is pseudofolliculitis? Anyone from the pseudofolliculitis? Uh, folliculitis is a bacterial infection mostly caused by staph aureus, okay? While pseudofolliculitis is not a bacterial infection, it is due to the ingrown of the hair, 
Okay. The hair, uh, hair is stuck up in the keratin layer and it produces inflammation. It is not a bacterial infection. Someone respond. It's not an infection. True. Okay. The treatment is mainly terbinafenoitroconazole. Okay. Tinea fascia. It is also the infection of the clabrous skin of the face. Look at the margins. The, it is well demarcated. The margin is more inflammatory as compared to the central. Okay. So this, the, this uh, central is clear. Okay. The plaque may be confluent. There may be one plaque or two plaque or the three plaque. They are now confluent. Okay. And the margins are more inflammatory. Okay. The most common species are Trichophytum, but Microsporum can also cause tinea fasciae. The presenting campaign are mainly the same itching, burning, erythema. They may be scaling, they may be annular or with raised margin, and the, at the margin, they may be vesicular or pustules. Okay, the treatment if there is localized lesion, then you have to give topical or antifungal agent. If it is generalized by like this, if it's a big lesion. It, uh, the, it, it is very itchy, then we have to give the systemic terbinafine or etagonazole for three to four weeks. Now, tinea pedis, which is commonly known as athlete foot, okay? Infection of the feet and toes with dermatophytic fungus, okay? This, uh, the common is uh, mostly caused by trichophytum rubrum, okay? The predisposing factors are the occlusion of the toe cleft, mostly in the adults, and uh, they are most commonly who share the washing and the bathroom facilities, Okay, they can present it like this scaly lesion in between the two interdigitalis. Okay, they may present with itching, interdigitalis dermatitis, like this, peeling, sometimes maceration, fissuring, and spreading to the undersurface of the throat. Okay, uh, sometimes it present as a mucation food. It's mucation food only scaly hyperkeratotic type. They are pink, covered with fine, slivery, white scale. These are this type of infection are usually chronic and resistant to the treatment. The most common side are the sole, heel, and side of the foot. Okay, it is usually dry type and extensive involvement occur in mucation foot. Dorsal surface is usually not effective. Nail infection may be associated, and sometimes it is worsened by the hyperhidrosis. Hyperhidrosis is excessive sweating of the palm and soles. And uh, if there is hyperhydrosis, they may be fissuring and smell due to secondary bacterial infection. Okay, this is mucation type. Okay, dry, scaly patches over the soles. Dry, scaly patches over the soles. Okay, mucation type. Okay, so uh, tinea pedis can involve in between the digit over the soles, like hyperkeratosis, and the other are uh, it may present is a vesicular blood type of tinea. Okay, vesicular blood is mostly associated with maceration, fissuring, rupture, pustule, and vesicle. And it, vesicular pustule is mainly aggravated in hot, humid condition. Okay, and the treatment mild to moderate. If there is mild to moderate, then topical antifungal treatment. And if there is extensive, then we have to give oral terbinafine 250 mg once daily for two to four weeks, depending on the how extent it is, how severe it is. Okay, you have to remember the two uh, the names of antifungal terbinafine etraconazole. These are the most common antifungal treatment. Okay, and the dose of terbinafine is 250 in adults and 250 mg once daily for two to four weeks. Okay. Now, tinea manna. It is a ringworm of the skin of the hand, palmar surface of the hands. Okay. It is caused by trichophytum uh, rubrum, most common. Okay. Now, the predisposing factors are the pre existing toenail infection. If there is any other uh, fungal infection at any other site, it can spread to the hand. Poor peripheral circulation, like in diabetes, most common in diabetes. All the infections are common in obviously immunos and compromised in, uh, patients. Pa it can present as a palmar keratoderma or maceration under, under rings, wrists, watches. Those patients who have uh, repeated eczemas or contact dermatitis, they have more, um, they have chance to develop tinea manum, fungal infection of the palms. Those patients who have palmar keratoderma, they have chance to de develop tinea manum, okay? So tinea manum can present as a hyperkeratosis. Tinea manum is usually unilateral, 
okay uh, the most common differential of tinea magna has is eczema of the hand while eczema of the hand is usually uni uh, bilateral while tinea magna is usually bilateral okay and uh, accentuated over the flagellar creases okay but tinea magna can present as a dry but this is the most common side but they can present the exoflated scale vesicular patches rat papules history rat papules follicular scaly patches or estimated scaly sheet on the dorsum only there is erythema in this case okay now the as i said early the most common differential is contact dermatitis or eczema okay psoriasis psoriasis is also a chronic inflammatory disease and the common sites can be palms soles other areas and they are scaly patches in psoriasis they are scaly patches but tinea manum can also present as a scaly patches so we can differentiate it tinea manum by the psoriasis that psoriasis can present or the other extensor side like knees okay extensor surface of the um, back this are on scalp while tinea panum cannot present at this site okay and while post streptococcal peeling which also can occur after the streptococcal infection or candidiosis bacteria in the trigo these are the differentials of tinea manum okay the treatment is same trebinephine itraconazole or grasofilvin okay now the tinea curious it is a fungal infection of the groin flexure area of the groin okay the uh, the presentation is same well demarcated plaque okay well demarcated plaque okay our um, margins are more inflammatory as compared to the central okay the most common organism is trichophytum rubrum so okay the uh, predisposing factors are the warm humid condition temperate uh, countries and the auto auto infection from the foot and the groin if there is uh, uh, if person has fungal infection other side of the body shearing of towels and the sports clothing they can easily spread to the fungal infection okay now the patient has intense itching okay erythematous plaque sharp margin and sometimes there is scales okay scales over there these are the common site and presented as like this okay satellite lesions are few in tinea curis what are satellite lesions similar lesions of these lesions okay uh, in this picture there is no satellite lesion but in this picture these are satellite lesion okay A smaller lesion of the primary infection like this sometimes papillary squamous sometimes simple erythematous papule these are the satellite lesions they are few in tinea curis while in candidial intertrigo which is also a common side of this they are multiple i i will show you the picture of candidial infection which has multiple satellite lesion while in tinea curis there are only few satellite lesion on sometimes no satellite lesions okay and other features are the same central clearing okay tinea curis can extend to the buttocks scrotum lower back or abdomen okay now differential as i said candidiasis is the uh, one of the common differential of tinea curis candidiosis no raised margin white pustule can be present in the satellite uh, candidiosis many small satellite lesion okay while in tinea curis no satellite lesion or the few satellite lesion while in candidiosis there is no central clearing in tinea curis there is central clearing okay and the edges uh, the in tinea curis the margins are more well demarcated it has a fair peeling edge okay i will show you the picture in the um, next slide the dress is versicolor as we discussed earlier they are non inflammatory usually asymptomatic with no central clearing it can present um, it can come into differentials of tinea curis erythrasma erythrasma is also a chronic bacterium infection bacterial infection which also involve this area and others are the psoriasis inverse psoriasis intertrigo intertrigo is a rash due to the friction of the flexor area contact dermatitis okay they can come in the differentials of tinea curis okay this is tinea curis with no or few satellite lesions while candidal intertrigo which have multiple satellite lesion i hope it is clear now okay the uh, in this the one different uh, one main difference is satellite lesion okay treatment is same terbinafine or etraconazole okay
Now, onychomycosis. What is onychomycosis? It's the onychomycosis is a fungal infection of the needles. Okay. It can cause by dermatophytic or candidial infection. There's some difference between the dermatophytic and candidial. Okay. Onycho onychomycosis caused by dermatophytic infection. They have a six distant pattern. Okay. Distal and the lateral sub, uh, sub, uh, sub unguel onychomycosis. Sub unguel unguel mean nail. Okay. Unguel mycosis. This is distal. This is distal part. Okay. Usually nail. In fact, this is the most common uh, variant of the uh, onychomycosis. Distal and the lateral sub subungual onychomycosis, distal and the lateral, okay? Uh, nail become discolored, hyperkeratotic, thick nail, okay? And it can involve the other tissue. And it can, onychomycosis by dermatophytic can present as superficial white onychomycosis, it present as a pottery white material and patches over the nail, okay? This is other, can involve proximal subungual onychomycosis, Okay, this is usually commonly seen in the HIV uh, patient. Okay, this is very uncommon presentation. This is very common presentation. We usually see this type of or total dystrophic nail. Okay, this is endonyx uh, onychomycosis, endotrix, nail, uh, nail plate is uh, scars, pitted or laminar spreads. Okay, it can penetrate deeply into the nail plate. Okay, total dystrophic onychomycosis in th which the nail plate is completely destroyed and the mixed onychomycosis. Sometimes these all pattern can occur in the single patient. Okay, uh, the most common we usually see in the OPD are the gesture and the lateral sub onychomycosis and the mixed onychomycosis. Okay, now if you have uh, the most common differentials of onychomycosis are the candidial onychomycosis. Psoriasis of the uh, nail, eczema, and the lichen planus. The difference is that in psoriasis, the most characteristic uh, lesions are the pitting of the dorsal uh, plate, pitting of the nail. Okay, and in the later stage, it can present as a discolor or the hyperkeratosis of the nail, thickening of the nail, which is commonly, which is also seen in onychomycosis. Okay, while in candidial onychomycosis, it can present as the same as uh, dermatophytic infraction, but in candidial, it is usually associated with paronychia. And what is paronychia? It is the inflammation of the uh, inflammation around the nail. This is, uh, if there is inflammation and uh, infection around the nail, it's usually associated with dermato, uh, candidial infection. Okay. I will show you the picture in the next slide. Okay, eczema can, in eczema, nail become also rough and hyper, uh, thickening of the nail, hyperkeratotic of the nail. In lacan planus, they may be rigid nail, and but there is no thickening in the lacan planus. Thickening can be seen in psoriasis, candidiasis, eczema, but there is no thickening in the lacan planus. Nail become thin, rigid, okay? I think this is clear. Now, treatment is oral trebinafine to 50 mg. But in this case, if there is an infection of the nail onychomycosis, we have to give uh, the treatment prolonged. Six weeks for finger nail and three months for toe nail. Yes. Okay. We have to give for the long period of time. And itraconazole 400 mg for one week monthly for two to three months for finger nail and three to four months for toe nail. Crisofilvin dose one gram for four to eight months. Yes, we have to give for the longer duration in case of nail onychomycosis. Now candidiosis. Okay, the next is candidiosis. Candidiosis is then fungal infection caused by yeast. Okay, and dermatophytic is mold infection. It is now yeast. Candida albicans is an oral yeast. See, it is an opportunistic fungal pathogens responsible for causing candidiosis polymorphism it can produce budding cells pseudo hyphase or true hyphase okay usually candidial are the yeast they are re reproduced by budding but they can produce pseudo hyphase and true hyphase okay uh, typically candida albicans live as a harmless commensal in gastrointestinal tract and genital urinary tract however overgrowth or immunosuppression will cause disease Okay, and some patients who are immunocompromised, like in diabetes patient, the, the candidial infections are more common in, in immunocompromised, immunocompromised patient. The patient who are taking immunosuppressive agent like methotrexate, uh, cyclosporin, and sometimes some patients who are taking prolonged antibiotic, candida albicans can, can overgrow. 
okay uh, they can present as a oral trash vag vaginal candidiosis okay these are the most common infection in immunosuppression okay candidiosis uh, candid clinical variant caused by candida candidiosis of the oral mucous membrane they can present as an acute and a chronic pseudomembranous candidiosis acute and a chronic erythematous candidiosis in erythematous there is only erythema it can be acute in can be chronic acute is usually due to antibiotic while chronic is usually due to dentures okay an acute and chronic pseudomembranous candidiosis is common is usually uh, in, in occur in immunosuppression. Chronic dark like candidiosis, chronic nodular candidiosis, angulochelitis, which is also common, medium rhomboid glossitis. These are the variant of oral mucous membrane candidiosis. Candidiosis of the nail and peronychium, peronychia, okay, peronychium, surrounding of the nail. Uh, candidial peronychium, candidial onychomycosis, and congenital candidiosis. Congenital candidiosis also can also, uh, other cases with the candidial allergy can occur or chronic mucocutaneous candidiosis. These are the variants caused by candida albicans. Okay, now the mucous membrane, we will. Okay, acute pseudomembranal candidiosis, oral trash, is present as a sharply defined, uh, uh, defined patches. They are creamy, crumb, crumbly, curled like. White pseudomembranes are present and they can. And, and they can easily remove leaving behind the erythematous space. Okay. There may be one or many patches. Buccal epithelium of the cheek, gum, or palate may be effective. Most common in immunocompromised patient. And in an immunocompromised patient, they can extend to the buccal mucosa, tongue, and even in the esophagus. Okay. The complications are erosion and ulceration. Okay. And due to erosion and ulceration, uh, in, uh, inadequate food intake due to pain. Chronic pseudomembranous candidiosis, same as acute, but the disease are persistent and occur mainly in the immunocompromised patient. Acute erythematous candidiosis, antibiotic sore tongue, because it is usually caused by prolonged antibiotic treatment. Mark soreness, renewed atrophic and erythematous mucous membrane, particularly on the dorsum surface of the tongue, associated with the antibiotic therapy. This is okay. This is due to prolonged antibiotic therapy and the treatment is to stop the antibiotic or reduce the dose of antibiotic and after the antibiotic therapy, it will resolve. Okay, chronic erythematous candidiosis, it is due to the denture stromatitis, it's also known as denture stromatitis. Okay, it is also uh, caused soreness in the epithelia, mainly denture bearing area, also present in the children wearing orthodontic appliances. It's most common in the female, upper denture bearing area, palate, gum, these are the common sites, and mucous membrane, uh, variable bright red or the sciatoma may be associated with angular chelitis, which is also the form of candidiosis. Yeah, candidate infection okay this is second to the denture okay now chronic plaque like candidiasis they are the form they present as a form persistent irregular wild plaques occur in the mouth commonly on the cheeks or the tongue mostly in the smoker okay chronic plaque occur in the smoker they, they have mild symptoms because they have chronic and slightly soreness and roughness occur uh, around hyperplastic area, there may be margin of erythema or unlike pseudomembrane, the plaque cannot be removed. Okay, while in uh, plaque type, uh, while in this type, pseudomembrane, the plaque is removed easily. Okay, leaving behind the erythematous space. Okay, chronic nodule is a very rare tongue become covered. Angular colitis, okay, soreness at the angle of the mouth. This is a very common presentation, especially in the children. It can action out, outward in the folds of the facial skin. Okay, there may be long history of soreness and cracking at the angle of the mouth. Okay, this is common after antibiotic therapy, after the fever. Okay, medium rhomboid glossitis. It is acquired condition characterized by the diamond shape area on the dorsum of the tongue it may be loss of papillary uh, variant of plaque like candidiosis it's also variant of plaque like candidiosis in diamond shape or uh, area of the tongue they become plaque over the tongue they're mostly commonly seen only commonly seen in the tongue now candidial intertrigo okay 
uh, any skin fold may be affected, especially in the obese subject. Interdrigo is most commonly seen in the obese when there is a friction between two flexures that is known as interdrigo and rash up, up here, erythema up here, and they is usually secondary infected by the candida. Location is genito, cural, axillary, gluteal, intradigital, inframemory area, submemory area, and between the folds of the skin on abdominal fold. Okay, they present as a pruritic, erythematous, macerated skin with satellite vesicular papules. Okay, this is intertrigo. This is the uh, infection between the two folds, red, macerated with satellite lesion. This is candidial intertrigo. Okay, and this can be easily differentiated between uh, between tinea curis by the tinea curis. In tinea curis, the margin are well dem demarcated. With somehow central clearing, I think the very few or no like lesion. Okay. And in the uh, tinea curis, there is no maceration, there is only dryness. Okay. While in candidias, there may be, uh, uh, there is maceration. Okay. Now, perineal candidiosis of infancy, also known as diaper or the nappy candidiasis, yeast colonization from the patient GI tract. It is due to the chronic occlusion by the wet diaper, which uh, which aggravate the infection, pursued with irregular borders and satellite lesions are formed. Okay, satellite lesions. This is nappy candidiasis, sarcoidomatitis. Okay, the treatment in which is topical isole creams and potassium perma permanganate soap. Okay, now candidia paro candidial paronychia is a candidial infection of the nail fold, common in those with hand or with hand immersed in water. Toe nails not effective. Severe fingernail, uh, several fingernails can be effective. Nail fold is red and swollen. Loss of cuticle, detachment of the nail fold, loss of surface of the nail plate called pocketing. Okay, thick white pus may, may discharge and there may be nail dystrophy, discoloration, onycholysis around the lateral nail fold. Okay, now this is paronychia as I discussed earlier. Okay, now tell me, this is more common with dermatophytic onychomycosis or candidial onychomycosis? One answer this question. Paronychia is mostly associated with dermatophytic onychomycosis or candidial onychomycosis. Right? Candidial onychomycosis. Okay, good. Okay, so if there is a dystrophy of the nail, if there is a discoloration of the nail or thickening of the nail associated with paronychia, then the most causative organism is Candida albicans because the treatment is different. Okay, while dermatophytic, in case of dermatophytic, the most first line treatment is rubanophene or itraconazole, while in case of candidial onychomycosis, the first line treatment is fluconazole. Okay, I think it is clear. The first line treatment in candidiasis is fluconazole, while in dermatophytic infection is terbinafine. Okay, now see. Azole solutions, okay, there is no terbinafine in this candidial infection. Okay, etraconazole or fluconazole. Okay, azole topically, okay, or fluconazole is a treatment of choice, fluconazole or etraconazole. While in case of dermatophytic, terbinafine is the drug of choice. Okay, now uh, on a few last slides remaining. Okay, chronic mucocutaneous candidiosis. Pers it is a persistent superficial infection of the skin and nail, which is chronic and it, it is they are resistant to the treatment. It is a disorder of the immune disorder of the T cell and can be associated with BOR because patient is immunocompromised. The other infection, warts, which is caused by hum human papilloma virus, can occur or other infection bacterial abscesses can occur in this type of cases. Okay. Persistent oral trash, cutaneous candidiosis, paronychia, and seborrheic dermatitis can also occur in these chronic persistent mucocutaneous. Okay, we have to give antifungal therapy, systemic therapy with fluconazole, itraconazole, or vodiconazole. Okay, like this, in this, rabinophene is not effective. Okay, thank you very much for your listening. Now, if you have any queries regarding anything, you can ask me. I'm here for five to 10 minutes.
Yes, fungal, uh, someone asked, are these fungal infections are contagious? Yes, these fungal infections are contagious. That's why uh, the predisposing factors are sharing of the towels and the clothes. Okay, they are contagious. Okay, uh, how is irritant eczema differentiated from the candidial infection? In candidial infection, the most common sites are the flexures, okay, in the flexure. While in irritant, uh, and there are satellite lesions, while in irritant eczema, if there is some irritation, the only eczema developed at this side, irritant eczema can also present with itching and the redness, and candidial also present with the itching and the redness. But there will be no satellite lesion in case of irritant eczema, okay? The common site of irritant eczema can occur everywhere where there is irritant. But in candidial, there may be intertrigo, there may be in between the digit, there may be nail. Okay. Yes, uh, someone asked, Tuba asked, do they reoccur after the treatment? Yes, they can reoccur after treatment. And most common cause of reoccurrence, if there is family history of fungal infection, the family and they are not treated with, they are not treat, uh, treating their uh, lesions. And if they stop taking treatment, for example, if they have persistenia corporis, and we have to we have we have given the treatment for three weeks, and after one week the lesion become improved, and they stop taking the oral terbinafine, they can reoccur. You have to com uh, complete the duration of the course. You have to complete the complete duration, like two to three weeks. You have to take the tablet terbinafine for three weeks. Otherwise, it's reoccur. There's a chances of reoccur. And if there is predisposing factors, like a patient is improcompromised, the sugar levels are not controlled, then can they can reoccur, yes. I uh, guess uh, Sadina asked, there is any preventive measure for fungal infection we could recommend to the patient? Yes, if there is fungal infection, the family, if there is a recurrent fungal infection, we can ask for the pack animal, they remove the pack animal or the infected pack animals. Okay, and don't share your towels and don't share your slippers like uh, in case of tenia pedis, while the person goes to the swimming pool, they can acquire fungal infection and tenia pedis. This can also occur due to the occlusion, occlusion of the feet due to prolonged wearing of the joggers and the shoes. We can also uh, prevent by uh, don't uh, wear too much clothes suit for a prolonged period of time. Okay, and keep your feet dry. These are the preventive measures. And why in case of tenia capital, don't share your combs or brush. Can we see, uh, Anusha asked, can we see paronychia in dermatophytic onychomycosis? Usually very rare. Paronychia is usually associated with the candidial onychomycosis, but if you have dermatophytic onychomycosis, there may be paronychia can also cause by the bacterial infection, okay? There may be secondary paronychia due to bacterial infection, but they are not associated with the dermatophytic onychomycosis, okay? They are associated with the candidial. If in case of dermatophytic and paronychia is present, they secondary to the bacterial infection. Paronychia occur, nail food, paronychia is the infection of the nail food, which can cause by bacteria or the fungus okay while in case of paronychia occur due to trauma due to due to trauma or if you remove your uh, cuticles while in uh, manicure and pedicure the cuticle cuticles are removed they remove your cuticle deep if deep cuticles are removed then they may be secondary bacterial infection paronychia or secondary candidial infection Uh, uh, Sakina asks, what is LA? LA applied locally. Sakina, where did you see LA? This tropical is still right. Locally applied once daily. Okay, this is locally applied once daily. Okay. Sakina, it is clear?
uh, uh, I think you are asking, Sagina, you are asking the steroid is a treatment part. Usually not. Steroid are contraindicated in any type of infection. But if there is too much inflammation, too much pain, then we can give put in the steroid for once or for not more than one week. Okay. But you, uh, at your level, you just remember uh, steroid are contraindicated in infection. Okay. Can we see discoloration of nail plate in onychomycosis? Yes. Yes. Uh, discoloration of the nail plate is common, commonly seen in onychomycosis in both candidial and dermatophytic. Okay, any other queries regarding the lecture? Okay, now I request you all please read the fungal infection. Okay, at least go through your uh, book. I recommend ABC of Dermatology or in Davidson, read the chapter fungal infection. Okay, and memorize the difference between fungal, uh, dermatophytic and the candidial infection. It is very uh, important. Okay, you have module now.